Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, it is Donnie, and I'm coming at you with the second of three tutorials about the systemd service files. And in the last tutorial, we said that we have three sections in the service file. We have the unit section, the service section, and the install section. In the last video, we went over the unit section. This time, we'll go over the service section. The service section is really where the action takes place. This is the section that contains the commands and any environmental variables that are needed to run the service. And it can also contain, it doesn't have to, but it can also contain a command to gracefully shut down the service. Now, there's a whole lot to this service section. There's much more to it than what I can go over in just this one video. There are just lots and lots of commands and parameters that you can set within it. So what I'm gonna do is just like I did last time, we're just gonna take a look at some examples of the different uh, service files that we have. And you know, we'll take a look and see what some of the stuff does. And then I can refer you to the man page in order to let you, you know, look up what all the stuff means. Okay, let's go over here to our virtual machine. And the first thing we're gonna look at is something very, very simple. It's called the colord.service. And just to make things simple, we're just gonna go ahead here and open it up in Vim, even though you normally would not edit a service file this way. But I like doing this just because it gives us a nice color coding. Alrighty, so here, up we have our unit section, of course, very, very simple. All we got there is a description. And then down here we have the service section and you can see here, it is a type D bus. So every service is going to have some sort of a type. Now, most likely, most of the services you'll deal with will be probably type simple. But this one is type D bus, which means it's gonna use the D bus feature of our operating system in order to enable inter-process communications. And then down here we have the bus name, and this is the org.freedesktop.colormanager. And anytime you have a service of dbus type, you have to have a bus name. This is going to be the bus that this particular service will be using. And I don't want to get too much deeper than that into the buses. That's a whole different topic. But anyway, this is just showing you the layout of this service section. The exec start is use our lib color D slash color D. So this here, this last section of this, that is the name of the executable file. And so this is gonna be the command then the path to that command. You have to list the entire path. You can't just say uh, you color D in this case. You have to say us our lib color D color D. And you can also have option switches in there. You have as many option switches as what you need. User is color D because we do not want this to run with root privileges. So we have created a user account just for the color D service. And then also down here, have private temp equals yes. In other words, yeah, uh, we want to keep the temp files private for this one. So that's very, very simple. So now let's go ahead here and look at another one. Okay, next up, let's take a look at a simple service. Now, simple service is a service which starts immediately and it just continues running. It's the daemon process just continues running. And for our example here, let's look at the ALSA state service. All right, so here we have type equals simple, and we have exec start equals, and again, again, the path to the command, to the executable, and we also have the different option switches. And then we have the exec stop, which basically just, uh, you know, tells the system how to shut down this process when we want to shut it down. Okay, so this one's very easy. Next, let's take a look at the ssh.service file for the secure shell service. So 
So in this one, we have a little bit more. We have the environment file, which points to the SSH file in the Etsy default directory. So there's certain things that we set there. And then we have the exec start pre file, which is an SSHD-T. And this is the command which we want to run before we actually start the service itself. So in this case, the dash T is doing nothing except testing the configuration that we have set in the sshd underscore config file. And then if that tests OK, then it will go ahead and actually start this as the service. And we're calling in some environmental variables there. I don't know where the environmental variables get set. They might get set up here in this, this uh, SSH file that's in the default directory. I don't know. I haven't looked, but that's my guess anyway. And then if we want to do a reload, then we're going to go ahead and test the configuration again, because most of the time when you do a service reload, it's because you have changed the configuration and you want to reload it. And then the exact reload command is to send a hub signal. Yes, the hub signal, the infamous hub signal. I believe that's signal number one, if I remember correctly. But anyway, this is the restart signal. What you kill with the, or, or this is the restart signal that you send with the kill utility, right? And except in this case, we're not killing it. We're just using kill to send that restart signal. And then the main PID is just the process ID of the SSH process. And in the kill mode process, so yes, if we want to kill it, then we're going to kill it as a process. Restart on failure just means that if the service crashes, it's going to restart automatically. And the way this works is that when you shut down a program normally, or if a program runs to completion normally, then if there are no failures, then it'll exit with a status number of zero. But if the status is a non-zero number, that indicates some sort of a failure. So if, in this case, the, the SSH service exited with some sort of non-zero exit status, then that's considered a failure, and it will automatically get restarted, unless, unless that exit status was 255. I'm not sure what the 255 is. I'd have to look it up. But at any rate, if the exit status is 255, that is the only time that the service will not get restarted. And then down here, we have type equals notify. And this is really the same as the simple service, except that it has to send a notification out when it's completed loading up and when it's completely initialized, completely running, it sends a signal out so that other services that depend upon this service will be able to start. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that one. The final example that we'll look at is a homegrown one that we did ourselves. And this one is not active. That's why you see me now here in my own home directory. But uh, it's actually something that you know was typed up for something else for another purpose. It was actually typed up on an Azure virtual machine. But I'm not logged into that virtual machine right now. I'm not logged into Azure. So I just went ahead and recreated it here in my own home directory just to be able to show you. So we can do like uh, Vim. At cd service, and what this is is actually for something you know with Kubernetes, basically. But uh, it doesn't matter what. But basically, here we've added a little bit more, and so in this case here, we have some environmental variables that we want to set. And the person who came up with this originally is kind of funny. Uh, well, funny and, well, not so funny at the same time, but because uh, he should have known better. But <laughs> he actually set this in environmental variable or the set of environmental variables on the command line. And then he said, well, 
uh, just set them here on the command line and then start your service. Well, there are two problems. First, he did not bother to export this variable or these variables, as the case may be. Uh, actually, I guess it's only one variable, but so he did not bother to export it. So the service file would never have found it. And the other problem, of course, was that every time you reboot your machine, if you have a variable set from the command line, whether it's export or not, doesn't matter, it would disappear as soon as you reboot your machine, and then the service would fail to start because it wouldn't find it then either. So anyway, what I told him to do was to set this variable within the service section of the service file. And it's very, very easy. All you got to do is put environment equals etcd underscore name in this case. You know, just whatever the name of the variable is. And then equals. And we have a whole bunch of parameters there, which we are, uh, or excuse me, we don't have the parameters. This is several different variables. So we actually have the etcd name variable there. And then we have the i cluster variable there. And let's see, let's see, let's see. And the I IP cluster there. Okay. So I have like what? One, two, three different variables, it looks like. Okay. So I have the three different variables. And if we have multiple variables, we just separate the variables with a blank space. And then if we have like, uh, uh, multiple parameters there for each variable. Like here, for example, I cluster equals cube controller dash one equals HTTPS and then the IP address. And then we have another, another uh, parameter there for it. Uh, cube control or two equals HTTPS and cube controller three equals HTTPS, whatever. Right, so we, we're separating all those different things there uh, that pertain to one specific variable with a comma. And then another blank space over here, and then another variable. And the reason that it's handy to set these variables within the service file is that in this case, we're using the same service file for three different machines because we're using it for three different Kubernetes nodes. And we need to have these variables set differently for each one of those nodes. So it's just handy that instead of going down here and like, for example, down here, you see this is one place where we'd have, you know, one IP address there, you know, for one machine, another IP address for another machine. You know, instead of just the, trying to go down there and and uh, you know, set all of those variables throughout the file, just to find them up here in your environment statement. That's all you gotta do. It makes things a lot, lot easier. And then down here, we have the exact start line, except this is not a, just one single line. Everything from here on down to there is actually all the same directive. And it's just the, uh, the USR local bin etcd with a whole bunch of different parameters. And what we did there is we broke things up on different lines. We put a different parameter on each line because we, we just want to make it more readable, right? And then at the end of each line, we just put the double backslashes there to indicate that, yeah, the next line is a continuation of the, the, the parameter here. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you look down through here, you've got all the variables here that are getting called back. So in this case here, etcd underscore name. If this were on kubectl1, this we would have our name set up here in the variable to kubectl1. And on kubectl2, that's kubectl2. On kubectl3, that's kubectl3, uh, right? So. Uh, again, as I said, just by changing the variable up there in that environment statement, it makes it a whole lot easier than trying to come down here in this complex exec start statement and try to make sure that everything is right. 
So we just call back these variables down here with the dollar sign and curly braces and it makes it a lot easier. And again, down here we have restart on failure. So if this for some reason crashes, it's going to restart, except we also have restart sec equals five, which means it's going to wait for five seconds before it restarts. So anyway, those are some examples of some systemd service files. So next thing up here, we'll go up here and let's look at the man page. So we could look at the man, or excuse me, we can look at the systemd.service man page. And as I said before, as I told you in the last video, look in this man page and just scroll on down or you can search for whatever you want, hit the slash key, search for whatever you want. And it gives you a lot more information about the service section of this service file than what I can give you here in just this short little tutorial. So yeah, be sure to check it out. Alrighty, that is it for this time. And as always, if you have enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And in the next video, we'll be taking a look at the final section of the service file, which is the install section. So stay tuned and we'll see you then.